Hi guys, this is Jason here from Nathaniel. In this lesson, we are going to demonstrate and discuss and have various illustrations of all things rhythm. Okay, so rhythm basically is a very deep subject. It's very difficult to even explain rhythm. In fact, one might explain rhythm to a child by perhaps saying rhythm is just the thing which makes you move or dance, you know, because there's too many things going on. There's a lot of maths. And it's very much dependent on the maths. It's There's a beat. A beat has a certain duration. You then divide the beat. You then multiply the beat. Then you use fractions. Then you use uh, LCM, HCF, algebra. I don't know if people use calculus as well, but there we have it. There's a lot of maths in rhythm. So a lot of you have been asking questions about rhythm. You know, some of you want me to explain what a meter is, what a... Time signature is, which is pretty much the same, then accents, polyrhythms, triplets, phrasing, and so on and so forth. So I just thought in this lesson, instead of explaining it like a textbook explanation, which goes, you know, topic by topic, chapter by, by chapter, I thought I'll probably play you some music, keep changing the music, keep it as spontaneous and improvised as possible, and then hopefully you digest the information and you can then probably come up with your own explanations of all these factors governing rhythm, the rhythm component of music. Now, rhythm, if you ask me, is the most inspiring part of music for me personally because once you have a phrase or once you have a structure in your head, you can definitely sort of convert it into anything. Like a rhythm could grow into a melody, it could grow into harmonic arrangements, it could grow into uh, chordal structures, and it could also become a bass line. So whether you're a pianist or a guitar player or even a singer, rhythm needs to be known by everyone. And some of us try to sort of avoid the fact that we are not so good at rhythm by, you know, trying to replicate what others do. So sometimes a person would give you all the information, probably in a video or in a class, show you this is how you hold the chord, this is the inversion, it gets very visual. But at the end of the day, there's a sonic element and that sonic element is governed by the maths. It's governed by how well you count and how well a clock you have internally, right? So there are a lot of ways to practice rhythm. Uh, a lot of people would suggest metronome. Some would suggest reading. Some would suggest just jamming with musicians and getting better, working with more experienced musicians. Some might say do uh, practice a lot of genres and so on. But in this lesson, I'm just going to give you some foundational stuff and also explain all these terms and uh, all the definitions basically in a musical way and see how we can put it on the piano. However, if you're watching this and if you don't play the piano, I think you can also benefit a lot from this lesson, right? So let's get started. Before we do, it'll be awesome if you could subscribe to our channel, hit the bell icon for notifications, leave us a comment, leave us a like, share the video across with your friends. Let's get cracking. So the most important thing about rhythm when you play it on any musical instrument is what I call as the pulse, okay? The pulse is something as a musician and as an audience which are both felt, you know? And the audience may not know that you're playing, you know, polyrhythms or dotted quavers or, you know, on an odd time signature or an even time signature. All they want to do is just move smoothly to the music. If there is regular movement of their body and obviously your body, uh, I would imagine that they are going to enjoy it or someone on the earth is definitely going to enjoy it because your music is tight, as we call it. It's rhythmically rock solid. So whenever you play music, you need to feel a pulse. You need to move in some way which is periodic, slow enough so that uh, you're, you can understand it and also see that you don't get a, you know, a glitch somewhere in your muscles. Uh, and also for your audience, you're trying to promote their movement. You're trying to get them to move a certain way or promote a certain style of dance, you know. And that's how it works. Music and dance work hand in hand. You're not going to have one without the other isn't it so if you're trying to look at musical rhythm 
that is the first thing you would need to do you would need to feel the pulse from within yourself and then send it to the listener i do not think the metronome helps with this a lot of people say oh if i do it with the metronome i'll get better but the pulse has to be felt from within to give my personal example as a musician growing up i don't think i used a metronome for the first 10 years went into a recording studio they had a metronome i played with it or it didn't really matter because i was following my mind and my my drummer of the band that seemed to be more efficient for me and we were fairly on time no one really complained in that recording so let's get cracking now if i play music like this i'll just play you some music there are a lot of notes which are being played right but if you see how my head is moving it's very consistent Four. So it's actually very difficult to count while you're playing it, even for me, for that matter. But um, you should feel that pulse ideally with your body, you know. So as you play a mu- music like this, you can move your head in some way, or you can move your foot. Now I tend to not move my foot because on the piano we also have a sustain pedal so your foot is pretty much tagged to that you'll have to use that and you know I have a technique where I use another foot for balance which I'll which I've shown in a exclusive sustain pedal video which you should check out on our YouTube channel so I generally use my head to feel the pulse you know and you start with your head and then you can start controlling your entire body you know what i mean by that is if you want to get louder just the volume the simple volume if you want to get louder in volume what you could do is take a breath in that's what they tell you i guess even during physical exercises you know and yoga perhaps so you go see i didn't do much i didn't think of getting loud i just thought of breathing in and when you breathe in you must have heard the volume just went up right so this is a very important way to play music because if you have to play loud you tend to you know go faster uh, it's a common issue you play loud you go fast you play soft you go slow so to avoid that issue breathe breathing really helps so it just makes the muscles you know more tense and more louder and then you breathe out and it makes the muscle softer let's try that again breathing with pulse So that's the first thing you need to do guys when you're playing the piano or any musical instrument feel the pulse and get some dynamics going into your performance right so this musical performance had a specific pulse now this brings us to a few rhythmic factors the first factor is the meter or the time signature so what you need to do is there is a cycle which will keep happening in a in a performance by a musician that cycle will last for let's say well how many ever beats you know how many ever pulse movements with your head and we call it a cycle because then that phrase or that pattern which the musician plays will kind of repeat itself right the it, or it may repeat in a slightly different way a pattern may be born out of the out of the phrase or out of the notes you play so why do we need that because otherwise the music will start getting very confusing it's almost like why human beings use a watch or a clock in the first place night or day you know we are people of you know habit or we prefer cycles as we live so with music it is no different you want a repetition so if i played a, a tune like this 
Now that entire tune ended da na 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 it kind of ended there so it then probably i would want it to repeat as a composer because you the listener would then digest it better because i'm giving it to you more and more so so you count the number of a uh, beats which elapsed from the start of the melody to the end and that will probably give you your meter or your time signature otherwise it's just an endless pulse 1 2 3 4 5 you could be counting or you just move bob your head you know so to convert it into a cyclic event you go cycle over Also, when a cycle ends, you will find that a chord might change. So that's another thing your ear could adapt to. When is the chord changing? You know, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, four. So that will end up being a four or a four by four. Don't worry too much about that by four thing. You can just say it's four beats per cycle or four beats per bar. I think that's easy to just say and understand. Now, if you do something like this, this perhaps is still a four by four because my cycle was ta na 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 na. Some people may mistake this for three. They may say, "Oh, the guy played three notes, so it has to be three." You know, but it's not if you count. Two, three. Look at your head. Follow your head always, playing the pulse. If you can't do that, record it on a phone, hear it back, and then see how your head moves. Sometimes it's tough to do the head movement while you play the keyboard. So. One, two, three. That's the speed. So that's pretty much again a cycle of four. Let's look at a cycle of three and see how that works. something like that so 1 2 3 1 2 3 3 also kind of feels a little different for the body so you should see how your body reacts to it does your body feel like moving this way i get that feeling personally with every 4 by 4 thing i play um or does your body kind of want to move sideways uh 3 could be a maybe it's on 3 again maybe there's a big maybe there does your body feel a bit excited or energetic or slightly weird then it may be an odd type signature like 5 or 7 so if i take this piece of music it just sounds very i guess relaxing One, two, three. One, two, three. So feel that. So step one, get the pulse. Uh, step two, you need to see the meter where it goes. And now coming to the actual information, or rather, before that, let's just look at a couple of odd meters and see how that can digest for you. So now the challenge here is how do you count this? One, two, three, so on, two, three. I, I have a lot of students who count it like that in the initial stages, but maybe you don't want to do that because it's not. And if you are saying three, it has to be an even three. It cannot be one, two, three, one, two. That is not even three. So it's essentially one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. That's how you would ideally count it. Two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, four, one, two, three, four, five. If you're confused with odd time signatures, what musicians do is we depart, we we segment it. We'll have. One two one two three one two one two three to make it like easy numbers, right? Two and three put together. One two one two three one two one two three one two one two three one two three four five something like that. Let's try a demonstration with maybe seven. One, so 
So again, seven. I'm simplifying for my mind to do it something like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. That, that's how I'm phrasing. Dun 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 da da dun dun da da dum bum ba. and so on so this is pretty much about a time signature or a meter so we've come from the pulse we've come from the time signature or the meter and then we have this idea about beat division okay so when you divide the beat what's going to happen is you set you set across a grid in which you start placing your notes and remember it's not just counting 1 2 3 4 and then you have those four slots to place the notes or the chord or the pattern or the hit inside those no not at all R music and rhythm is just like a measuring tape so if you're measuring you know let's say x amount of feet you then start dividing those feet into inches and then sub inches and so on right so it's ultimately a measurement unit which is time so you have an entire beat which let's say lasts for 1 second you can go how much ever into that second you would desire right so common music you could say is around 100 to 120 beats per minute that's what you call your tempo so in a nutshell that's the speed of the beat the tempo is like the amount of time you have for every beat but then the tempo doesn't tell you how much you divide the beat you can divide it by 2 by 3 by 5 by whatever you want right so in the next part of this series we are going to look at how you can get inside the beat develop some incredible phrasing some accents along the way so do not miss the next part this is a series so come over there to the next one and uh, Again don't forget to subscribe turn on the bell when the next video hits you cheers